Okay, so we're gonna first talk about um, some issues with axes. And one thing that is dangerous when you teach data visualization classes is you teach hard, fast rules like never truncate the y-axis when you have a bar chart. And that is a hard rule, you should never do that. But then that gets interpreted as never truncate y-axis ever. And that is not true. Um, often you'll see memes like this online um, that shows like is truncating the y-axis misleading and if you look at the y-axis it's at like 99% or 98 to 100% and so that makes it misleading. Um, and while this is like funny, sure, um, it's not actually true. You can truncate the y-axis. This is a bar chart. Don't truncate the y-axis here. Um, but it is surprisingly like okay in lots of situations. It's actually more legal to truncate the y-axis than you might think. So we're going to talk about a few situations where it is okay um, and give some examples here. So when small movements matter in the data, you don't need to start down at zero. Um, if the scale itself is distorted and never reaches zero, then you don't have to show zero. Um, when zero values are impossible, similar to the, the distortion, you don't need to worry about making the graph start at zero. Um, so one example of this is when small movements matter, it's okay to truncate the y-axis. So here is the United States GDP from 2007 to 2011. And it's showing the effect of the Great Recession on overall GDP in the United States. And if you look, it's really hard to see any effect. It's right here. This is the, the dip um, right after mid-2008 here. There's the recession. And so if you're going to be a, a fundamentalist about you always must start your y-axis at zero, that's all you're going to see. But in reality, we haven't seen like 8 trillion GDP for decades. We haven't seen 0 trillion GDP for centuries. Um, so there's no point in going all the way down that low, especially because small movements, in this case, small movements are like half a trillion dollars, like $500 billion. So what you can do instead is actually truncate. Here's the dip that came from the Great Recession. It's almost a whole trillion dollars that we lost in GDP because of the 2008-2009 recession. This is totally fine to show um, because it's a, it's a small movement of billions and billions of dollars. But if you zoom way out and and require that it starts down at zero, you're going to miss the whole trend when it was an actual trend and millions of people lost their jobs and it was a big important thing. So it's okay to do that here. Um, when the scale itself is distorted, it's okay to truncate the y-axis. A good example of this is actually Uber and Lyft. Um, when you take an Uber, you have to, you, you're supposed to rate the driver after you're done. And kind of the industry standard nowadays for people riding Ubers is that you always give a five. If you give anything lower than a five, um, it's seen as really bad. And at first that was just kind of a courtesy thing, but a few years ago, um, there was a news story about Uber internal policies and they released some documents um, from Uber at, that showed that if, you, if drivers get below a certain threshold, then they're at risk of losing their jobs, which makes sense. Like if they're a poor driver, they should lose their jobs. Um, but leading up to this leak, what people were seeing was lots of signs like this. So if you look at this, this was the rating system explained. It's still relatively like this, um, where a five-star rating means you got there and you survived. A four-star rating means the driver sucked and you have to fire him slowly. Um, three star means like fire immediately two and one star means like you were going 120 miles an hour in a 40 miles an hour zone or like they tried to murder you it's that extreme and the reason this was the case is because um in these internal documents that that buzzfeed found when they were doing investigative journalism on this story was that if you ever drop below a 4.8 average as an uber driver you are at risk of losing your job so that's like basically five star like if you have a whole bunch of five stars and one person gives you a four star rating um you're at risk of losing your job um if somebody gives you a one star rating just because they were like mad at you um you could get fired immediately um and you're at risk of being deactivated as a driver and so in this whole world of like uber ratings it was incredibly important to basically keep a five at all times um regardless of what the actual rating was and so if the scale is distorted like that, there's no reason to, if you're going to plot like Uber driver ratings over time, there's no reason to start down at zero because that's meaningless um, for the company. Like you're looking at changes from like 4.81 to 4.80 or something ridiculously tiny.
Um, also, just the scale itself is is useless. Um, we see this with Amazon scales too. Um, when you rate things on Amazon, you have a five star system. And so if you rate something five stars or four stars neat, that generally means like it's good. Um, if you look at the distribution of most Amazon products, it's either like a whole bunch of five stars with some four stars, or it's like half and half, five and one. You'll never see anything like if you look at the actual histogram that they show above the above the comments and the reviews down below, it's always basically bimodal. And so like having the five stars is they're trying to get more granularity, but it really doesn't help. Um, the scale is completely distorted. It's really just like this is good or this is bad. Um, anything mediocre is very rare to see um, because the scale is just messed up. So if it's messed up, you can deal. You can do whatever you want with the axis to show that the small, tiny movements matter. Um, it's also okay to truncate when tiny value or zero values are impossible. Um, so there's this chart here showing the temperature of two different people, Sarah and Bob. And if you are a an axis purist, you should say that this is the only appropriate graph because it starts down at zero on the y-axis. The problem with this is like, who has a fever right now? Can you tell? No, you can't. Um, it might be Bob because he's higher than Sarah all over there. Um, but it's useless because we need to zoom in to see what the actual fever is because like in the human body, going from 98 where you're fine to 100, you suddenly have a fever. That's a two degree difference. If they ever drop down to like 50 degrees, that's a sign that they're not alive anymore. And so there's no point in having all of those axis labels there. This is far more helpful, even though the axis is truncated. Um, the place, like these pictures came from an article. If you press P on your keyboard, you can see the presenter notes. There's a link to this article at Quartz, um, where one of their main data visualization creators got really fed up with commenters and people on Twitter and on Facebook yelling at him whenever he made a graph that didn't drop down to zero. And, and that's like a very common thing that people yell at you about um, because people don't understand the rule. Like again, never truncate with bar charts. Fine, that's great. But with other things where you're not encoding the whole distance of the line as part of the data, then you can truncate all you want. And so he wrote this whole blog post here explaining, like giving examples saying like, if you're a hater because I truncated here, here's the actual graph, is that better? And it's like really snarky and cool um, because he just goes through and he's like, this is such a dumb comment, don't do this. Um, it's the same thing, like if you see a study where they're trying to prove causation, often people, the very first comment in an academic study will be like, correlation isn't causation, this is an awful study. And it's, it's useless, like don't throw that comment out because like they probably tried to prove causation, they probably tried to run a natural experiment or an actual experiment or something to account for all of the unmeasured confounders, everything that might mess up their causal story, they probably took care of it. But because we drill into people's heads that correlation is not causation, everybody jumps on that, um, the internet masses. And internet masses jump on this too. And they say, you're not, you're, you're, you're truncating, therefore it is wrong. That's not the case. You can truncate. Um, again, never do this on bar charts. This is our example from the uh, amounts and proportions session um, where it's bad to do this because the length of the bars themselves shows the data, not just the endpoints here. And so you shouldn't do this. Um, but it's totally okay in other situations. Um, just because you don't have to start at zero doesn't mean you should never start at zero. It's often good to do it just to like head off the potential haters, especially if you have a scale that goes from like five to a hundred. Um, just drop that down to zero because cutting off the last five numbers doesn't really matter that much visually. Um, and people won't yell at you because you start at five instead of a hundred. Like you can expand it down to zero and that's fine. Um, so that's, those are kind of the, the main rules for truncating. It's fine um, if you're trying to tell a story about small movements or if the scales are messed up um, or if the zero values or the super low values are physically impossible to ever reach. So don't worry about that. You can now justify yourselves in the future. Um, another thing you need to do with axis scales is to keep them consistent and not change the, the intervals between the breaks, which is actually really hard to do in things like Excel and R. You have to work really hard to get the axis scales messed up, but it does happen sometimes. Um, and so a couple weeks ago, um, this is from April 2020, there was this chart that a Fox affiliate in Colorado posted about the, 
the new cases per day in the Denver area. Um, and if you look at it, it looks like it's growing neat. They even have like geom text going on on top of the geom points. That's cool. But if you look at the axis itself, um, they're better than Georgia. Their, their x-axis is in order, so good job. But if you look at their y-axis, it's going from 30 to 60 to 90. So we're going every 30 numbers, great. And then 100, so we're suddenly going up 10 numbers. And then 130, 60, 90, so we're back to the 30s. Up to 240, so that's a jump of 50. And then we're going every 50 all the way up. And all of those lines are equally spaced. So I like nobody knows how they actually did this because those aren't logged numbers. Those aren't like transformed in any mathematical way. They're just kind of like they decided to go by 30 and then got to 100 and decided to put 100 because that looked good. And then they switched to 50 halfway through. Don't do that. That's bad. Um, another thing you don't want to do is do something similar to the x-axis. So this is from your reading in Alberto Cairo's book um, where he shows like this first example here is bad because if you look at the tick marks, it's going from January, February, March, June, or maybe those aren't February and March. Maybe those are other months. We can't tell. The reason it's truncated because we don't have the data there. And so if we just squish it down to make a trend, that's bad. This is lying about the actual trend. So he proposes to do something like this, where you just say January to February, we have data and then we have nothing. And then it starts up here. Or his better example here is to kind of interpolate the data and say, we're going to guess that it was probably following this trend between the, the two missing months. And so you have it be a, a separate dotted line to show that it's not the actual trend, mark it clearly that it was missing or that it's interpolated or imputed. And that's fine. Um, as long as you're not messing up the scales, you're good. So don't do that bad example there. And again, doing that in R is hard. You have to fight the you have to fight uh, scale x continuous to even make it do that. Um, so generally, you're not going to accidentally do something like this. One thing you can accidentally do though is you don't want to impute this missing data here when you're going across categories, and you'll see this often. Um, so if you look at this, this is um, fake data from a fake survey that didn't actually run. I just invented the numbers here. But you'll see this often where like we have the scale here from strongly disagree to agree. And so we put the, the points here at the counts and then we can draw a line. So it kind of shows that there's a normal distribution looking thing where most of the responses were neutral. Um, and then it kind of goes down towards the strongly disagree and the strongly agree. And you'll see this all the time. I've done charts like this too. Um, because you want to try to show the shape. The issue here, though, is that you can't. Um, when people responded, they couldn't choose some value in between strongly disagree and agree. It was only those two options. Um, and so this line here makes it look like the count of midway between strongly disagree and disagree was like five right here. But that wasn't ever an actual value. But you're inventing this value by drawing this line across the categories. So don't do that because that's you're just making up data now um, where there won't be any trends like that. Plus, those are different categories. Um, they're not actual numbers. Even if you code this in your data set as like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, that's a standard thing people do. And then they try to get the average. And it might be a, if the average is like 0.5, then that means people are kind of between neutral and agree. But again, these are not numbers. And it's not a consistent scale when you did the survey. And so the difference for one person responding between their idea of strongly disagree and their idea of disagree is going to be completely different for another person responding. And when they look at the survey and say, in my head, how much do I weight strongly disagree versus disagree, like these are not, it's not a continuous category or a continuous scale. So you can't do any like mean or median stuff in between. That's like illegal. Um, so rather than do that, you do something like this and just get the counts. Don't try to impute across the categories because they are just categories. Um, and you can't talk about trends in between them because again, it was not a continuous scale when you measured it. Um, so those are the general issues that you'll run into with, with axes. Um, so to, to recap, it's okay to truncate your y-axis in, in scatter plots and in line charts and in other things that are not bars. Um, in some situations, like where small movements matter or where zero values are impossible, you should never truncate your x-axis in the middle of a, data, like a, a stream of data. 
and you shouldn't have weird breaks um, on either of your axes to just like change the scale midway um, because that's weird. So don't do that. And if you're in Georgia, don't ever shuffle your x-axis if it's dates to show that it's uh, that deaths from COVID are decreasing over time because that's no longer over time. Um, so that's uh, those are the main things we should care about when we think about axes.